the age of consent, right, is 18. Yeah. Um, but then, like, why can you not drink until you're 21? That's kind of also an interesting question. I don't know. Maybe there's it's... enough data to show that people drink and drive when they're under 21. I don't, I don't know the stat. But they do it over 21 a lot, too, and yeah. into their 30s. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a complicated question. But it's... in the end, it worked out for you. Yeah, I mean, it worked out, but I did need to take a long-ass break. I mean, at 24, I was even in a pretty good place um, professionally. I think I was, like, starting to get some really good noms um, and, like, some really good, you know, movies and things like that. And then I just kind of was like, I need to, you know, go back to school or do something normal. Like, this is too much um, chaos for me right now. So I just kind of bolted. Yeah. yeah. And so what did you do during your break? Did you did you go back to school? I did. I went back to school. I kind of like tampered in a few things. I did international business. I did marine biology. Um, but then I realized marine biology wouldn't pay very well. And I like money. So I decided to demote that into a hobby. And then I pursued computer science. And that's where I thought I was going to end up. But after a couple of years of that, it was monotonous. It was yeah. Monotonous did not satisfy the inner, you know, performer wildebeest inside of me. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. My brother is a computer programmer and I'm just like bored to tears with his, I don't even have, it's not like he talks about his job that much, but I'm like, how, how do you just do code all day? Like it's kill weird. me now. The programmers that I met, they were interesting. Like they had really, uh, they had a great sense of humor. I liked going out to lunch with them. Like I really enjoyed being around them, but doing the programming and learning from a teacher who doesn't really want to teach, um, that was kind of like a bummer. You know, yeah. it's like, it reminded me so much of that commercial, you know, that I, for, I don't know what his name is, but he's like, for sore eyes, use sore <laughs> eyes. Oh, oh my God. Wait, the guy from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> that guy with the monotone voice. The, yeah, the sound of his voice was like the theme song to my computer science years. It just got <laughs> so boring so fast. <laughs> So Natasha, while you were on a break from the industry, did you find that people like knew that you'd been in the adult industry and was there like a stigma from that career path that followed you at all? Um, I kind of felt like just being a porn star, we have a different vibe that people outside of porn are just not used to. And I think a lot of people like it just made them uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, I did feel that way. And it kind of like, it really kind of like bummed me out for a while. But I kind of just decided that like, I wouldn't let it make me mad anymore. And I would just put that to rest and just try and like, be the change I wanted to see or whatever. And like, just remember that like, I'm a valid, worthy human being just as is whether I'm a porn star or not, and then just kind of like, live my life in accordance with that and not let the negativity get to me, but also um, still find ways to like be out, you know, but it's also important to me as a porn star to not be like offensive in public. That's just something like, yeah, when I'm with family, I don't talk about anything like that. I would like to, but I don't. Um, but when they piss me off, I will occasionally get a little bit more. Vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the fight. You, you got to fight it a little bit. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so you came back from your break. What were, when was that? And what were like some of the biggest changes that you noticed when you came back? Um, I think, oh my gosh. Uh, when I came back, there was just, it was just bigger. Like the industry was bigger. There was, there were more companies I'd never heard of before, more directors, obviously a new, you know, gang of girls and everything. And so I kind of was just like caught in a little bit of a tornado, just kind of looking around and um, figuring out what was what. And, um, but at the time I was living in San Francisco. So I, I think my way of like keeping it simple was to just stick to what I knew, which was webcamming. And then that's right around the time when OnlyFans came about. And that was very simple, at least in the beginning. So I kind of 
just stuck with those two things while I also was keeping another eye on the industry and like maybe where I wanted to go with it. Hey guys, if you wanna support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.